Welcome back to Let's Play Dark Capo 2. Man, I just had a weird moment. I was just playing my guitar with the effects pedal. I like had this chord progression that I quite liked, and I was like, okay, I'm gonna play that and like use the uh I forget what it's called now. It's like it can loop whatever I play for up to 30 or so seconds. So I was like, okay, play this chord progression I came up with and I'll play over it. Because now I've actually got the freaking adapter to actually plug the damn thing in so I don't have to use batteries all the time. So I was just like playing along. It's like, yeah, do 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 do. And I was like, wait a second, this is sounding a lot like the outro of Layla, only different. It was like an odd mix of like Eric Clapton, Dwayne Allman. Randy Rhodes and David Gilmore. It was kind of weird. It was nice because, like, the sound of it was just awesome. It was like. I would, like, uh, show it because I did record it, but it literally went on for nearly 10 minutes, so yeah. That was a random experience for me. It was a moment where I'm just like, I like this chord progression. Then I, once I start playing along to it, I'm just like, ah, oh, damn it, Clapton did it. It's like a freaking episode of South Park with uh, the Simpsons did it thing. It's just like, Clapton did it. Shit, god damn it. This is why every time I come up with a chord progression, I always have to like go over it a few times. It's like, does this sound too much like something I've heard before? I'm just like, shit, I'm gonna have to change it now. I like that chord progression, damn it! I don't think it's actually the chord progression itself, but rather the way I play it, probably. And the way I play over it with the melody, so yeah. Anyways, on with the plot. Cherry blossoms. I'm under the everlasting cherry tree and it's in full bloom. Also, what did you think of the little short story I put in one of the previous parts? It was quite interesting to do as well, because... I'm too lazy to write most of the time, so I'm surprised I was able to just like, okay, let's come up with a short story mystery, and I did. It's just like, I always like look at stuff like that when I actually do that, and just like the final result of it, just like, yeah, I quite like it. Why don't I do that often enough? It's just like, man, I'm lazy with that. It's beautiful. I'm used to seeing cherry blossoms all the time, but this feels especially beautiful. It must be because I'm dreaming. It looks more fanciful than usual. Yoshiuki! Huh? Yoshiuki! Huh? That sounds like Coco. What's she doing here inside my dream? Coco's lips moved as she said something, but I couldn't hear her. Can't you speak up? Indecisive? Yoshiuki mo! That's cause wait no, I thought you said you don't have to think about it. And <laughs> it's just like, but he never does. Think about what? What is thinking? What does thinking mean? You're doing it right now, Yoshiki. Oh, that's what thinking is. <laughs> Yoshiki go. Huh? Why was Nanaka in my dream too? What are they talking about? I had no idea what she was talking about. Wow! Now they were both clinging to me. I didn't know what was going on, but I couldn't exactly complain. I wish I could have more dreams like this. What? Do you want to end up like Mikado from school days, Yoshiuki? A day's like, what school days? You don't want to know. What? Why are Sakura Sen and Otne here? I really feel that school days was probably made by someone who, like, just, like, looked at a relationship and just, like, you know what? You see all these people just, like, being all casual in these relationships, breaking hearts left and right. You know what I'm gonna do about it? I'm gonna insert something that will absolutely make them just like their stomach would just go Pleh. Oh my god, could that happen to me? Why are they mad at me? <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm going to hell. What do they even believe in that? Whoa! What's going on? It's a good point, actually. Do I mean in Japan? How many people actually believe in hell anyway? Well, I don't know. I've never really been overly knowledgeable when it comes to uh, all that. I guess I'm falling. I'm falling down. <laughs> Ah! 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 Huh? A dream? Well, he admitted it was a dream in the dream, and now he's like, oh, it was a dream after all. Ah. Ah. So glad that was a dream. Ah, I still feel like I'm falling. Weird. Then he realized he fell out of bed and hit the table. Anyway. What a terrible way to start the new year. What could it mean? Was I unconsciously thinking about what Otne and Yume told me yesterday? Huh? Someone's at the door. Jehovah's Witnesses! I'm coming, I'm coming, you don't have to keep ringing it. Nanako was there wearing a beautiful traditional kimono. Her hair was clipped in a traditional snarl, and she was standing very ladylike, pure Nanaka from head to toe. Kinda looks like an exotic bird. Like, if... Is there even such thing as a pink-colored parrot? I don't know why, but that's what I thought. Nanaka? <laughs> well, happy new year to, to you too. I was still in my pajamas. Bad, very bad. Well, it depends what kind of pajamas we're talking about. Uh, I'm gonna change real quick. Can you wait for me? <laughs> yeah, but I do. <laughs> Can you imagine if he... Well, if he answered the door in his, say, boxer shorts and like that, then that would definitely be awkward. I showed the knock to the living room and hurried back up to my room. I quickly threw on jeans and a sweater. There, finally, presentable. I rushed into the bathroom to wash my face and brush my teeth. I'm back! What? Again, another situation where they say something and then Yoshiuki's like, what? And it's like, nothing, nothing, and they completely forget about it. Give me a break. <laughs> I was sleeping. She sat facing towards me and bowed. Happy New Year. I can't believe it's like nearly April already this year. It's gone by fairly quickly. Hope the New Year treats you well. Speaking of which, I haven't even changed my calendar from February to March yet, and March is nearly over. She was radiant. Traditional clothes really suited her, and yet it was so different from her normal look, it was like seeing her for the first time. It's like if there was a pink background, she'd camouflage into it. She handed me an envelope. Is it a New Year's card? I have one for you too. I went back to my room and brought back the card that I wrote for her. That's the thing, really. People write cards. I don't simply write cards. I put a little doodle on there as well. I always have to draw something random. Like, my father's birthday was a while back, and he's a big Doctor Who fan, so he's like, You know what? I'm going to draw a Dalek. I have not really watched Doctor Who, but I'm going to draw this thing. I'm going to give it an afro, because it's a continuous joke that I have, because he has a little bit of an afro, and apparently, years ago, he had an enormous afro, so it's always been a reoccurring joke for that. And he tends to collect receipts, so I was like, gonna have it so the Dalek is saying, receipt, 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 instead of exterminate, exterminate, and all that, so just like, yeah, I do random things like that. Then I write the usual little box, just like, to, from, and all that. But I always have to have the little drawings. 
We exchange cards with each other. I would have preferred to get it in the mail, even if it was, Lex. But I guess this is better than not getting the card at all. Let me get you some tea. Aka grabbed my hand as I tried to stand up. Ow. Well, um... I was too shy to say it. I never thought she could look so beautiful. The word beautiful was not enough to describe how she looked. What? What? I haven't said anything about it yet. Shit. I knew it wasn't literally written on my face. But I guess it was obvious from the way I was acting. Naka smiled at me. I felt embarrassed. Well, let me get you some tea. I was in the house alone with Nanaka. I felt nervous. Huh? Someone else was here. I was getting a lot of visitors today. It's only the second one. You can say that when a third visitor comes along. I'll take care of it. You just stay there. Coming. Coco? She was also wearing a kimono. The color and pattern was totally different from Nanaka's. She looked good too. Okay. She was surprised to see a pair of women's sandals in the entranceway. They were Nanaka's. Yeah, kind of. I had a brief flashback to my dream that morning. It was just a dream, it wasn't anything to be serious about. That's right. No, you're not. Come in. I brought Coco through to the living room. Awkward! They looked surprised to see each other. I expect them to say hi and smile at each other. But for some reason they seemed really tense. But why? I wonder who would make like make this scene all the more awkward by showing up. I can't quite think what character would really suit it. Like a character comes in just like ah 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 ain't mine, bitch. What character would seem the most awkward to do that? And for some reason, I thought Wataru. Imagine that. He just he just randomly showed him just like ah ah ladies, he's mine. And you're sure you'd be like, what the hell? What? What's up with this weird tension between them? Um... Anyway, let me make you both some hot tea. Best friends, but rivals. Why wouldn't they answer me? Coco remains standing by the door. Anaka stayed fixed in the living room. What can I do? Coco spoke with a loud, bright, and rather obvious tone. Anaka eased off and started smiling too. You know, it's a bit weird when you really think about it. Think of all the times like someone comes up to Nanaka and asks her out. But she's doing a similar kind of thing, but she's not the only one. That's after Yoshiki's love. So it's just like, Ah, so this is... this kind of reversal of what I'm used to. But unlike that scenario, Yoshiki is the densest character since, uh, What's-His-Face from Shuffle. Now, I'm sure if there is another visual novel that I LP that... I haven't actually played, read, or whatever, before, I imagine another protagonist will potentially be even denser. But the only visual novels that I can think of off the top of my head that I've 
have any kind of idea of helping is like Higurashi or kind of a shoujo so far, so I don't think the protagonists of those are quite as dense as Yoshiyuki. And they were back to normal. Each complimented each other's Komodo. I couldn't figure out what was going on because I am dense, but I was glad that they were able to break through that tense atmosphere. I prepared the tea, and the three of us started on the New Year's meal that Coco brought. It was delicious. This is fantastic! Why am I talking like that? We passed our meal in silence. Eventually, we started talking. Who does that in this day and age? That's right. It just seems awkward when I like, when it's like someone else talking but I have to talk and say the exact same thing at the same time. I never expect it, so it comes out awkward. Coco laughed as she heard us responding in unison. No, it was not. I had Coco and Anakura on either side of me. They were both in beautiful kimonos and it was so different from normal. I felt so nervous. Anaka was beautiful, but Coco looked pretty too. She was so innocent and cute I couldn't describe how attractive she looked. And we were all alone with me in my house. <laughs> I felt like the Lord of the Harem. Wee! Wait. This is exactly why I saw my dream this morning. One girl on our side. Uh, does that mean that I'm about to do something indecisive? Am I going to hell? No! <laughs> I would scare them, wouldn't it? Can you imagine I was just complete silence and suddenly- No! What? 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 Uh, it's nothing. I mean, that's always a get out of situation thing in this visual novel, isn't it? They just say, oh, it's nothing. And they forget about it. The idea of going to hell terrified me so much I'd unconsciously let out a cry. Calm down. That was just a dream. It didn't mean anything. Can you imagine if someone that doesn't believe in hell and hell happens to be real? They're just like, I'm not going to hell because I don't believe it. Then they end up in hell. It's like, I can't be in hell. I don't believe in it. It doesn't mean shit, Sonny. Get in line. No! That'd be weird. It didn't mean anything. <laughs> They laughed at me, huh? We finished eating our food with this wonderfully somewhat goofy music. Afterwards, we relaxed in front of the TV. I've got to learn how to play this on guitar at some point, because that'd be random. Pretty much the same thing was on every station. Live reports of New Year's crowds at various shrines and the annual music competitions. If not those, it was Kabuki performances and old court music. It was like this every year. <laughs> so it's kind of like how a lot of girls buy shoes that hers. Just like, oh, they look nice, but oh my god, it freaking kills. But oh, it looks so. Oh my, I let freaking it out. But it's so beautiful. That's what I'm taking from this situation. Always wear clothes that just, like, aren't very comfortable to wear. I'll never understand it. The two of them smiled shyly. Being in the unfamiliar and formal kimono was clearly making them uncomfortable. Yeah, I agree, I'm getting bored with the TV. It's not even on. It's never switched on. Yeah, again, another situation where it's a bit delayed. Yeah. I hate when it rains on New Year's. It. We continued to talk as we walked around the city. I saw a few other girls in kimono. 
Some older couples were wearing them too. I like the whole atmosphere surrounding New Year's. Really? I was just dressed in my usual stuff. I wasn't even sure if I owned a kimono. I should ask Sagra-san when she comes home. I wonder how I would look in something like that. I just can't picture it. With my long hair and all that, just like, uh, I don't know, it might look a bit odd, especially since, you know, I'm not Japanese, so it wouldn't have that traditional kind of look to it. Heck, I feel like even just dressing up like in a suit would look a bit odd for me. I don't know how the hell I'd look. Do you think so? <laughs> I certainly wouldn't. Facial hair kind of like... That's the weird thing about facial hair, really. If you have facial hair, you look more like a man. If you shave it off, suddenly you look like a teenager again. Hey, don't be rude. You know how I think you look? Uh, she looked too cute, I couldn't insult her! Uh, uh, it's not fair! I'd look nicer if I dressed up nice too! What? Um... <laughs> you know... This is the last time we're gonna get to see these choices, so I think we're gonna, like, choose these two to see how the reaction is gonna be as well. Nope, wrong, wrong, it's quick on the menu. We gotta see these other choices. Awkward though they may sound. Let's go with the awkwardest one. How about a loincloth? Oh no. What have I just said to them? I was just trying to be funny. But are they going to think I'm a pervert? Now picturing it in that kind of anime style that they usually have where it's just like a brief kind of transformation just like loincloth maybe he does like a sumo kind of thing he's like Whoo! kind of sound effect they were laughing so hard at least they're not upset I was glad they liked my joke that was just a suggestion Those eyes. <laughs> Maybe I just shouldn't have said anything. Maybe you should say something else, Yoshiki. You're going back to that scene and you're gonna give more choices. What does it even mean with golf outfit anyway? I. Uh, golf outfits? Ah, uh, they stopped talking. I imagined myself as a golf and felt depressed. <laughs> so gr- Wait, you guys, I'm not going to subject myself to that. It's just not my style, sorry. 
There I was, digging myself into a hole again. Good grief. No, he actually is turned into a golf. Oh, God. I don't, I don't really get it. I mean, what is the golf kind of thing? It's just like... The makeup and the dark clothes and all that. I mean, I like kind of like... Well, I don't really wear dark clothes necessarily. I just... Shirt, jeans, and if I'm going out, my coat. Which is like a long kind of black trench coat. It's, it's quite... I quite like it. But the trouble with it is, when it's windy, it's like... Whoa! But it's a lot warmer than, you know, just wearing a normal coat, because it actually covers your legs a bit. I can totally imagine me just, like, playing on stage with a coat on, just like, this is a bad idea, why? Uh, because it's freaking boiling? Why would I bring a coat on stage? I'm just gonna, I just stand there awkwardly being like, everyone else will be dressed up, I imagine, and I just be standing there in a shirt and jeans, just like, yeah, I'm just here to play guitar, play music and all that shit. Don't need to dress my best now, do you? What do you want me to freaking come in a business suit? Like a business suit. What did I say? They both started turning red and acted shy. What? What? What are you spacing out for? What? What the hell are they talking about? Why is it against the rules if I wear a business suit? I'll never... Uh, well, sure, it looks all kind of classy and all that, but... I don't know, I just don't get the obsession with, like, dressing up in suits like that. I mean, I maybe I'm just more casual, I suppose. Don't really give much a shit. Jeans, shirt, couldn't give a fuck. To me, like, fashion in general, I'm just like... I don't give a fuck. It's just like, I like... Why a while back, I like thought of it and just like... It's a bit like evolution, in a way. You adapt to new fashions. Those who don't adapt fall behind. But at the same time, it's not like evolution, because evolution is actually something required, while fashion is just optional. And I couldn't give a fuck. <laughs> but politicians wear suits, and they're freaking just whatever. I knew, never knew that. I guess it makes sense that a business suit would make a man look sophisticated. It just ma it's just bo mind boggling, really. It's like, oh, sophistication! Our idiot politicians wear those suits, so, uh. and dodgy businessmen as well, so I'm not quite sure about that. <laughs> hmm. Someday I would make sure to wear a suit in front of them. Then they could get all gooey over me, too. No, I wouldn't do that to them. They visited the shrine again, it was the same shrine from the night before. There was a huge crowd there. <laughs> we were so focused on eating last night that I guess we forgot to get our fortunes, huh? <laughs> and so that's what we decided to do. Cool. That doesn't make much sense. That's believable. Some shrines make sure everyone gets best luck for good luck for New Year's. Uh, 
That's assuming I do, anyway. I gave the Shrine Maiden the coin and reached into the box to draw my fate. Let's see. Okay, it doesn't seem to matter at all. Quite gentle. I shook the container gently. I guess I did this choice before as well. There. A stick with a number popped out of it. The number is... Two circles? Oh, it's zero, zero. Here's number zero, zero. She gave me a piece of paper. And then I saw... X. Extreme luck. That's vague. Vague luck. Does it mean you'll be extremely lucky in a good way, or extremely, well, unlucky? Well, I would say unlucky, wouldn't it? Extreme unluck! That'd be odd. It's like, this is, this is true English right here. Hang on, let me read what it says. Let me see. You are going to have extreme luck this year. It is extreme, it goes beyond the best luck, and it's as high as the stratosphere. Everything will go well for you beyond all your wildest hopes. However, if you make a single wrong turn, you will go to hell and never be able to come back. You must live your life freely but carefully, be decisive, but don't be afraid to back off from conflict. What? So you're as high as the stratosphere with your luck, but make a wrong turn and... <laughs> so... What's that mean? I think the fortune is indicating that you must be more decisive. You must choose, or you will go to hell. The Nakara and Coco looked at me with pity in their eyes. All of them knew how to act, they were sweating out of nervousness and confusion. I, I guess it's telling me to live as usual, I think. But I have to be decisive. But there are times when it's okay to avoid making decisions too. But this is not one of those situations. I don't understand this at all! This fortune has confused me even more. I tied the slip of paper to a tree branch and smiled. Goodbye, my fortune for extreme luck. Seriously, what is this shrine up to?